hope everyone is doing amazing on this Saturday or whenever you're listening to this. And yes, for those watching the video, I finally shaved. I usually shave and cut my hair on Saturday. And throughout the week, my hair grows. And then I have the whole werewolf thing going. But I digress. I decided to do this episode. It, go ahead and grab you a drink or some popcorn or whatever. Because I need to unpack some things before I go into this. The Keeping It Real with KC podcast is about lifestyle, entertainment, news, and sports. I've mentioned this before. Over 90%, 9-0, and I tell you, I try not to get into my analytics because it once you get too bogged down in the numbers, you you become consumed with them and then that becomes your life where you're not doing something or if you make a decision, you're making it only because of the numbers, not because of something you personally want to do for whatever art you're creating because this is an art, being a podcaster being a speaker is an art. And I don't want to get too bogged down because I don't mind tweaking things and doing this and doing that. However, I don't want my art to be affected by a bunch of data. That's just not my thing. Now, with 90% of my listeners being female, for the podcast, I, I do take that into account. I have done different things on this podcast and continue to do different things on this podcast. One thing that became very popular was the tarot card readings where I was doing other things and I, people were listening but then I started doing the tarot card readings and then people really started listening. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'll, I'll add more tarot card readings to the show then and, and do that. But as for Keeping It Real with KC, this podcast is lifestyle, entertainment, news, and sports. I cover everything on this podcast except politics. This is a no politics channel. And I make that clear, obviously, from time to time. When I speak, and as a matter of fact, um, speaking of speaking and doing the show, I am working on booking another guest. Someone approached my show and he wants to come on and talk about UFOs. And I find UFOs interesting, especially since they declassified a lot of videos showing UFOs, even though personally I still think some of this stuff is is BS. I, I believe in life. I think it would be very small-minded to believe that in the entire universe that humans are the only people that exist. I, I, I just, I think bigger than that. Especially when we haven't really been to other parts of where we're at now, the galaxy, where we we can barely get to Mars. I, we haven't set, people aren't haven't been to Mars yet. We got to the moon, even though some people question that. But when it comes to space travel, we're still on on a level between one and ten when it comes to space travel. In my humble opinion, I think the world as a whole, I'm not even talking about America where I live. I'm talking about the world as a whole when it comes to, to space is still at maybe a two, if that. And that's being generous. But that's another thing for another day. But I will more than likely book that person for a Conversations with Casey episode because... I find UFOs interesting. And, and people who want to come on my show 
and have a conversation with me because I don't like interviews. I don't like, well, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Oh, well, how old were you? All this other stuff. No, I, don't, I would just rather have a conversation with people and see how they tick. I like to see how people tick because honestly, human mind is something else. And I've met and interacted with many people over the years. And some of them, I'm just like, hmm, that's different. So more than likely, I will book that guest to come on and talk about UFOs. With lifestyle, I talk about self-help. I talk about healing, obviously. I talk about love, as I did with, if you didn't listen to the conversations with Casey episode, my very first one, with Carissa Montooth, who is a love coach and energy healer. And she's amazing. You should really listen to that episode. I, I don't mind having that conversation. I don't mind doing the tarot card readings. I just recently did a sports episode talking about Floyd Mayweather, um, the PGA payouts, what people made, which I didn't know Tiger Woods made that little bit of money in the last um, PGA payout. And um, what else did I talk about? There was something else in sports. I, oh, yeah. And the guy who passed away, his wife had put his baseball collection up for auction. And come to find out, his baseball collection was worth almost $20 million. So I thought that was interesting. And that deals with sports. And again, as you know from the introduction, from my podcast part for those who listen to the podcast you know I don't watch sports however I find certain things interesting with sports which is why I cover sports on this channel on this podcast I also do my wacky news weekends if you have been listening you found out about the mafia boss who was able to escape and go into hiding, went to the Dominican Republic. He loves Italian cuisine and decided he wanted to share it with the world. And he starts a YouTube channel. Mind you, he's been in hiding for years and the police did not have a any type of any scent on the trail. The guy starts a YouTube channel and he didn't, he didn't keep, he didn't, have his face in there. He edited out his face where his face wasn't in the videos where he was doing the, the Italian cooking or the authentic Italian cooking, which that can be debated on another day. But he still had his tattoos and that's how the police identified him. And then he was extradited out of the Dominican Republic back to <laughs> where he came from. So that happened. I didn't know there was a Lego mafia. Is in the Lego, the building blocks, where there's a black market for Legos. That was part of the wacky news. I cover everything except politics. And for those who are asking, because I can already hear people asking now, Casey, what do you have against politics? I don't have anything against politics at all. As a matter of fact, I love politics. I consume a lot of political information. Politics is very polarizing. And when politics is inserted into something, especially when you deal with people who respond emotionally, it stops logical thinking. Because when you're responding from an emotional level versus from an intellectual level, it, it, just, it, it just goes wrong. And also, when people have been bombarded with political stuff for the past, I'd probably say five years, it's one of those things where some people are just like, I want somewhere I can go where I don't want to have to talk about politics. Where I don't have to hear about politics. And that is why I 
don't talk about politics on this channel. And some people say politics are in everything. I remember when I was doing a fundraiser for breast cancer and some stuff happened during the fundraiser that was very political, not political in the sense of dealing with government entities or anything like that. But as for political strategizing, when it comes to affiliations and companies and, and all of this other stuff. And I had said to the individual I was working with doing the fundraiser in regards to that, they were like, well, politics is in everything. Eh, it doesn't have to be. Politics doesn't have to be in everything. The other reason I rarely discuss politics with people is because most people are ignorant when it comes to politics. That's just what it is. You have a third of people who keep their head in the sand and just don't care. You have another third of people who depend on sources that have been proven wrong time and time again. And then you have another third of people who... They they follow certain things, but they don't always get down into the nitty gritty and blah, 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 all that stuff. That's why I usually don't even bother with it on a discussion level. But for this podcast, I, I talk about everything. And something happened a few days ago. Actually, not even a few days ago. It happened a day ago. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to put this on the podcast because this we can file this under the category of lifestyle. We can file this under the category of personal finance. We can file this under the category of investing is what we can do. Once upon a time, as some of you, my listeners who have been with me since the beginning, you know, there was a time where I couldn't even open a bank account. My credit was so bad. Couldn't even open a bank account. I had delinquent accounts all over the place. Delinquent bank accounts, delinquent, delinquent credit card accounts, charged off credit, credit card accounts. Um, charged off stuff with loan companies. The list goes on and on and on. When I look back then at the difference between then and now, it's like, wow. It's amazing. And I'm not saying that to pat myself on the back or anything, because honestly, I can't take credit for anything. Any Anything that I have or have accomplished, I give credit to the universe because I wouldn't be able to do what I do if the universe didn't give me strength and if the universe didn't give me guidance, but mostly strength because it takes strength to pull yourself out of something and you have to pull your strength from somewhere and I pull my strength from the divine is where I pull my strength from. You can call it the divine, you can call it God, you can call it Allah, you can call it Yahweh, you can call it Jehovah. You can call it the light. You can call it the source. Whatever makes you happy. It's all the same thing anyway. But an email popped up. And they were like, you owe 800 and something dollars. And I was like, 800 and something dollars? What? What is this? I was, I was so ready. <laughs> I was ready to snap on someone and I was about two seconds away from making the call. And by making the call, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> I was, was going to say, hey, get on it. But, you know, <laughs> and I, I was reading the email. And in fine print. At the very bottom of the email, they said, you cannot be sued for this because of the age of the debt and it cannot be reported on your credit report. And I was like, hmm, which I already 
knew, but the way they worded it at the beginning, I thought that they may have put it on my report in error or was about to put it on my report in error. That's why I was living until I read all the way down and read the fine print. For those who do not know, and first of all, I am not a licensed financial planner. I'm not a licensed attorney, even though I almost became an attorney. But like Brandy said, almost doesn't count. So there's that. I do know that when it comes to law, dealing with bills, the law, and this is a fact. You don't have to be a licensed attorney to know this. You don't have to be a licensed certified financial planner to know this. Seven years. That's it. This debt that they were talking about in the email was back from 2004. We are in 2021. Last time I checked. Yeah, 2021. <laughs> That is 17 years. I looked at it after I read everything and I said, oh, that's adorable. And then I closed it out. I deleted the email. But even when you have certain accounts, and I've mentioned this before. I forgot what show, but I mentioned this before. But clearly it's... It's on my spirit to say it today because someone obviously needs to hear it. If you have a bill, let's say it's five years old and you haven't paid it, don't pay it. Now, obviously, we all have free will. You can do what you want to do. I'm just saying that if you pay it, let's say you pay the amount that they're asking for. Okay, you paid that. That's going to show up on there and reactivate for seven more years because it was still a payment on a derogatory account. It's different from when your account is in good standing or if you settle. That shows up on your credit report too. It's not going to be a thing of, oh, well, you know, if you owed $800 and you give them $600 and it's settled, when people pull your credit report, it's going to say settled is what it will say on your credit report. It's not going to say paid off. It's not going to make you look good. Some people might say, oh, well, at least it shows that you attempted to pay it. No, when they look at it, they're going to be like, oh, they settled. That's what's going to jump out at the people. It's, it's not going to jump out that they, they made the payment. That's not going to be, that's whatever. It's going to jump out that it, it was settled. So that's why I tell people for old bills, don't pay them. And especially if it's been more than seven years. On the, uh, hold on, I had to write it down because I always forget the name of the Fair Credit Report Act or Reporting Act. On the Fair Credit Reporting Act, within that bill that was signed into law, this is a law. It goes back to seven years. Whoever is collecting a debt, they have seven years to collect on that debt. You can say statute of limitations. Where if they don't get it in seven years, they have to remove it from your credit report. They have to. They can't keep on putting it on there. They can't do that. Now, if after five years you make a payment and do this, you're, and you're like, oh, well, okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and make an arrangement. And, and you owe $800. And you're like, okay, well, I'll pay you uh, $150 this month and then I'll give you 150 next month, you've reactivated that account. And then once it's settled, because that's what it'll probably end up being, it will reactivate for seven years and then fall off. 
is more than likely what will happen. But when it comes to old bills after seven years, don't waste your time. Don't waste their time. And they're, they're wasting their time already contacting you. Because if they were like, oh, well, we're going to sue you. We're going to take you to court for um, seven years. Something that's a, a 10 year old or a 14 year old bill. OK, let's go to court then. Because your defense is going to be the law. They only have seven years. That's past the seven years. They're not going to get anything. And then if you had to get an attorney, which really more than likely you wouldn't have to because that could probably go to small claims or something like that. It, the judge is going to rule in your favor. I could not see a judge saying, oh, well, we're just going to throw a law out the window. It's possible because, I mean, stranger things have happened since 2020. But for the most part, they're going to be like, this is more than seven years old. Why are we in this courtroom? So that is what I wanted to say to those who are considering paying old bills or if you have an account that was charged off. Now, let me make something else clear. I always add caveats to things. Just because they can't report it on your credit report and just because they can't legally collect it by suing you doesn't mean that the debt is gone. The debt will always exist. So if you have a debt with a certain creditor, let's just say $800, because that seems to be the thing. And years and years pass, that can still be in that creditor system. There are certain credit card companies, American Express, <laughs> That will sometimes deny you an account if you had a charged off account with them, even though it's been more than seven years. Which they can do, even if your credit is a one. They can be like, well, back in 1994, you charged off this this Amex for fifteen thousand dollars. <laughs> We had to charge off this Amex for $15,000, but quiet as it's kept, American Express sue people. <laughs> Usually they, they sue people <laughs> to get their money, unlike other credit card companies. But it's all good. I love American Express, by the way. Amer if anybody at American, don't be mad at me, American Express. I, I'm, I'm just talking. I'm just talking. <laughs> don't close my accounts. <laughs> so, but... That's the thing. The debt will always exist. However, legally, they can't collect on it. So if you ever receive something from someone, don't freak out and be like, oh, my goodness, what, what's going on? What's happening? As, as soon as you see the date of it owed and you know it's been more than seven years, forget about it. Unless, unless they do attempt to sue. And some collection agencies are dumb enough to do that. And the, the reason for that might be, because some people don't know this, if you receive, if you are summoned to appear in court, regardless of how frivolous the lawsuit is, if you are summoned to appear in court, and you do not show up, the plaintiff automatically wins by summary judgment, meaning that the judge will automatically rule in the plaintiff's favor because you did not show up for court. So if you're ever summoned for court, and that's another thing, don't let people try and run an okie doke on you. What you have to do is your research. Don't let a collection agency say, oh, well, yeah, We've already set the court date, this and that. You need to show up during this court date. No, you need to pull the receipts. Okay, what court is it? What circuit? What's the date? 
Do we know who the judge is yet? All that other stuff. Find out. You can call the courthouse directly and say, hey, I was told that I've been scheduled to appear in court, but it doesn't seem like something's right with what they're telling me. Can you confirm with me on this date for this issue? And the courts can tell you whether you're scheduled to appear. Don't just take a collection company's word for it. In addition to that, there's another law and you, you'll have to do your research on this one. I found out about this a long time ago and it worked. Um, I forgot if it's in the Fair Credit Reporting Act or if it's in another, um, I think it's in a debt. What is the name of that law? Oh, gosh, I'm doing this from memory. I want to say fair debt collection practices or something like that. There is a law on the books. I'm pretty sure of this and I'm pretty sure it hasn't changed. But again, do your research again. I'm not a licensed attorney. Do your research where if a collection agency is trying to collect money from you, but you don't want to deal with the collection agency, let's say that they're really nasty. But whoever originally had the debt, and I'll just use, I'm using American Express as an example because I was talking about them earlier. Let's say you had a debt with American Express, but American Express was like, you know what? We're going to give this to another, to a collection agency and let them handle it and let them make the phone calls and do all of this and do all that. We're going to farm it out to that collection agency and do that. There's a law on the books, pretty sure. That you can write a letter and you have to state what the law is. I forgot what um, what it is. But again, you can look this stuff up where you request to deal with the original creditor where you're saying, I don't want to deal with the third party. I want to deal directly with the person who I owe the money to. That's another thing you can do. Look it up. I'm 95% sure that law is still in effect. But again, do your research, all that other good stuff. For those who deal with collection agencies, that you would prefer to deal with the actual person. Like, let's say you owe T-Mobile money. But T-Mobile already charged off your account and sent your charged off bill to a collection agency. Then if you're saying, no, I don't want to deal with this collection agency, I want to deal with T-Mobile. Under the law, that is your right. Again, I'm 95% sure. I forgot what the, the statute or whatever is, but I used it before back a long time ago. And I'm pretty sure it would still be on the books. So keep that stuff in mind too. There's a lot of things when it comes to collection agencies and credit and all of this other stuff. And I'm not a huge fan of the whole credit system. I never have been. But one thing I will say is that the seven years that it that's that's pretty much a done deal. That's a done deal. I mean, could you imagine if you had to take Every single bill that you were unable to pay at some point in your life and it would follow you for the rest of your life. Could you imagine that? It'd be like a, it'd be like student loans on steroids. Which student loans is another story for another day. I'm not really going to go there. <laughs> There's a lot I could say about student loans. But... Eh, it's, I'm already dancing on the line of politics as it is. So let me back up. But yeah, if you had to carry every single bad decision you made as to credit, and don't get me wrong, you know, actions have consequences. However, I don't feel people should suffer for the rest of their lives. In seven years, that's pretty good. It gives people time to grow. Lord knows I grew. 
I'm not, I mean, at my core, I'm the same person. But as for some of my, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? As for some of my toxic financial habits, even though I still have a few, <laughs> um, a lot of them have fallen to the wayside since then. And seven years gives people time to grow. This was on my spirit because I received that email yesterday and something was saying, you need to let everyone else know if they ever receive an email about a debt that's older than seven years old. Now, if it's a student loan debt, don't play games because they, they'll start garnishing your wages and doing that and, and everything else. If it's student loans, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. Grab a bottle, hunker down and pray for pray for daylight. I don't know. But when it comes to regular debt, credit cards, regular loans, and stuff like that, seven years. Seven years. Okay, that's all I have. K-I-R-W-K-C dot com main podcasting platform. This podcast is carried on Apple, Spotify, Google, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Overcast, Bullhorn, Amazon Music, Audible, and several other podcasting platforms. K-I-R-W-K-C on all the social media platforms. Until next time, be blessed.